story of Christianity in Uganda to Pentecostalism and the Charismatic Church. Episode number two, Bishop Professor Mugume Bagambak Richard, my name is Bishop of Upper City Covenant Churches and President Stock Chancellor of Uxat University. It's a blessing let's pray father we want to give you praise thank you for the life the energy the power and uh, we thank you for the authority of your word that you have bestowed in us we bless you we celebrate you and we magnify your holy name may your son be praised in jesus christ's name amen hallelujah friends a history of christian Christianity in Uganda, Pentecostalism, and Charismatic Church. This is episode number two. In this episode number two, we'll be focusing on the spread of Christianity in Uganda. Let's begin Christianity and sub-imperialism. The fact that Christianity in its two rival creeds became the religious of Uganda profoundly affected its spread to other arts of colonial Uganda. The British needed local collaboration to make their occupation of Uganda effective and cheap. That was the financial economy was always a prime consideration for British. The British regarded civilization of Uganda as superior to anything else available in Uganda and the acceptance of Christianity and literacy enhanced that superiority. Devaganda, for their part, became atheistic sub-imperials. They benefited from their relationship with the British. Buganda increased its territory at the expense of particularly of Wunyoho which was severely punished for Omukama Kavalega's heroic but in the end fertile resistance. Uganda both Christian and Muslim became chiefs, in other words British agents, in such areas of Winyoro and Ankole. The soldier and adventurer Semei Kakunguru, a Protestant Muganda, who had quarreled with Apollo Kagwa, attempted to compensate for his political failure in Uganda by carving out for himself a kingdom in eastern Uganda. His followers, in search of land and power, were able to find both in Bukedi and Teso. In the wake of this sub-imperialism and indeed part and parcel of it went the missionary expansion of the Church of Uganda evangelists. They were motivated by an eagerness to spread the Kiganda culture alongside the Christianity by desire for a status and a prestige often untainable within the Uganda itself. But apart from these political and social advantages, we must not discount genuine religious impulses. The Catholics appealed to the sacrifice of the Uganda matters 
as inspiration to Uganda to offer themselves as missionaries, as living sacrifices. For the Protestants, Pili Kington's revival of 1892 emphasized a victorious Christian life of a total commitment in the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of the evangelists shared the arrogance and demeaning tendencies of the colonial agents, but many are remembered for their devotion and duty, often in difficult circumstances and with the literal financial reward. In these early years, two men stand out for their qualities of devotion and, and saintliness. Apollo Kivevulaya and Johanna Kitagana. Kivevulaya, a Protestant unusual for his lifelong celibacy, became an evangelist to Toro in 1895 and subsequently spent his life among the Mboga people of, Ka of Congo, now called Zaire. He was ordained a priest, made a canon, and died in 1933. Kitagana was a polygamist who gave up his five wives before baptism. In 1901, when already in his 40s, he set off on a remarkable evangelistic career, pioneering Catholicism in Winyaruguru and other parts of Ankole, in Kigezi and Ufumbira before his death in 1939. Christianity in Western Uganda How Christianity spread in Western Uganda From the 1890s, the Western Kingdoms of Uganda had come to terms in one way or another with the British colonialism. The acceptance of Christianity was an important means of adjusting to this new situation. In Toro, Christianity came as part of an attempt by Kasagama to, rec to recreate the kingdom of his father in Winyoro as a response to military defeat and devastation in Ankole as part of the Mugabe's aggrandizement of influence insisted or rather promoted by the ambitious Enganzi, Nuwa Mbaguta. In each case, it was a Protestant version of Christianity which was promoted by the local leadership. Colonialism and Christianity meant the extension of Kiganda influence and this provoked resentment of varying degrees of intensity. In Winyoro, it produced an explosive situation and the Nyangire have refused. Disturbance of the 1907. This marked the beginning of the end of direct Kiganda influence. The British seek to a policy of relying on the indigenous leadership then implement their policies and phased out the Waganda chiefs or agents. This also meant an end of missionary hopes of establishing Luganda as the common language of Uganda. The Anglicans reversing their policy embarked on Runyoro Lutoro translation of the Bible and prayer book. Paradoxically, although Christianity in Western Uganda are through off to Telege from Uganda, Christianity did nevertheless develop a long line first worked out in Uganda. Thus, kings and chiefs overwhelmingly became Anglican. But just as the political defeat in Uganda had not meant the collapse of Catholic missionary efforts, though, so in Western Uganda, the Catholics took advantage of their underprivileged status to make an appeal among the peasantry. 
To take the case of Toro, Kasagama's kingdom was not as traditional as he had made out to the British. It was the 19th century creation of his grandfather, a descendant Munyoro prince, and lacked a strong local root. Kasagama tried to exclude Catholics altogether from his kingdom, but was prevented by the British. Despite continuing political discrimination by the Mukama's government, Catholics made impressive progress and were to become a majority of Christians in Toro. In Ankole, colonialism accentuated traditional divisions between the Wahima pastoralists who constituted a kind of ruling class and the majority Bairu agriculturists. The Anglican Church became a religion of the Omugabe and the Wahima, but the Wahima were less than enthusiastic about practicing their religion and tended to leave education to the Bairu. It was only with the revival movement of the 1940s and 50s that the Anglican Church really took root in the Wahima communities. Meanwhile, the Bayou had accepted Protestantism and Catholicism in fairly equal numbers. As a rough generalization, one can say that Protestant Bayou tended to be in a majority in the central countries of Ankole, such as Kashari and Shema. Catholics predominated on the pre ferry for example, in Wunyaruguru. Christianity struck deep roots in Western Uganda. Today, some of the most dynamic Christian communities in Uganda can be found in this region. But Christianity also played a very complex and at times divisive role, helping to aggravate old tension and create new ones. For example, in Ankole, the Anglican Church at first reinforced traditional division between Bahima and Bairu by its political alliance with the rulers. But it also created a politically conscious Protestant education Bairu elite, which by the 1950s had become the most articulate critic of those traditional class distinctions. But at the same time, the Protestant Catholic antagonism was hardening into part of political division along religious lines. Christianity in Eastern Uganda. How Christianity spread in Eastern Uganda. Eastern Uganda lacked the cultural cohesiveness and large scale kingdoms of Uganda and Western Uganda. In fact, a small scale politics and cultural and linguistic diversity were the most obvious characteristics of the area, which included a wide variety of Bantu society. Those were the Vasoga, Wagwere, Vanyole, Vamasara, as well as Japadora, Luo speakers, and Iteso. The whole area beyond Busoga was called by the Baganda Wukedi, the place of naked people, expressive of patronizing attitude to people who did not know how to rule themselves. European missionaries accepted and expanded on these prejudices and imported their own racial theories about primitive people on the lowest ladder of civilization. Such a stereotypes tended to be reinforced by the devastating effects of famine and sleeping sickness in the early years of the 20th or the 20th century. One particularly blatant example of this negative attitude can be seen in ALO Kichings on the, back, the backwaters of the Nile 1912, which was even more revealing subtitle studies of Sane child races. 
The book is replete with such expressions as a loathsome and disgusting, a rather dull race with the heavy and intellectual faces, a reputation for expert thieving, and the least admirable thing about them is their language. Kitchen cannot decide whether it is degenerate or undeveloped. Kitching went on to become, in 1926, the first Anglican bishop of the Diocese of the Upper Nile. For most of the area, with the exception of Busoga, Christianity came in the aftermath of Kakungulu's conquest. It was associated with the imposing imposition of Kiganda culture. Luganda became the language of church and school. In the Busoga, an attempt to use the Lutenga dialect had to be abandoned in the face of opposition from northern Busoga, where a markedly different from, from, form of Lusoga was spoken. For the rest, there was never any alternative to Luganda and this applied even to the non-Bantu, Iteso and Japadola. Defeated and fragmented, there was no possibility of Nyangire rebellion in the East. Eventually, in the 1950s, the Anglican Church in Iteso did produce an Iteso Bible and prayer book and the Catholic Church among the Japadola has more recently emphasized the vernacular in worship. But elsewhere, Luganda remains dominant. The Protestants, in an effort to overcome or mitigate some of the resistance to accepting the gospel, and hopeful that a civilizing mission would produce spiritual results, pioneered cotton production and exploring in Teso, and encouraged the coffee cultivation in Ugishu. Christianity remained essentially a foreign imposition for many of the people of the area. But predictably, it was from the Protestant educated elite products of Muiri School near Jinja and Nabumali in Ugishu that in the 1920s and 30s, the first welfare societies incipient political organizations sprang the Young Vasoga Association, the Wagishu Welfare Association, and the Young Vagweri Association. As in other parts of Uganda, Protestant chiefs and chiefs were from the beginning in close alliance. In fact, the Roman Catholic Milieu Mission was known as the Mission Ectaria Wami, the mission which doesn't eat, that is say, obtain chieftainses. But again, as in other areas, this did not inhibit the Catholic evangelistic zeal. The Miriel fathers, often with more foreign personnel working in the area than the Church Missionary Society, CMS, scored successes among the peasantry and have become the majority of the Christians in Teso and Bukedi. That is said, the districts around Teso, Protestants predominate in Busoga and Bugishu. Christianity in Northern Uganda How Christianity spread in Northern Uganda In the North, Kiganda influences were minimal. The first Uganda evangelists were Banyoro, where traditional links were strong, or Luo, who had spent time in Banyoro, such as the Alu Sira Dongo. Christianity did not put down strong roots in the north. What chief awake of the Paira clan invited missionaries to Acholi in 1903, but Awik himself had no interest in Christianity and was skeptical of European value generally. In any case, he was not the ruler of the whole of Acholi. 
Inlango, Odora of Waduku did actively promote Protestant Christianity. He was ambitious to be recognized as Kabaka of Lango, something the British had no intention of doing. Lango had no traditions of chiefs of any kind, and the colonial imposed chiefs had no traditional authority. Odora's Christianity was a matter of profound indifference to most Lango. Moreover, G.H. Dreebach, one of the early days in Lango, a student secularist, insisted on a rigid separation of church and state. Burning down churches built too close to the government boma. The Lango got the message that the colonial power had no interest in promoting the new religion and this reinforced their own prejudices. Thus, in both Acholi and Lango, the usual CMS Church Missionary Society strategy of using chiefs was misapplied and abortive. But the Catholics also struggled to make an impact. The north of Uganda was assigned to the Verona Fathers, an Italian society founded by Bishop Daniel Comboni, whose center of activity was the Sudan. But in, in Father J.P. Kurazalora, who spent some 60 years in northern Uganda, they did produce a missionary with remarkable understanding of and sympathy for low people. The lack of response in the north produced a comparative neglect among the missionaries. This was understandable when the response in other parts was great and there were severe limitations on financial and personnel. But it did make the north and underdeveloped area in terms of missionary work as it was in other aspects of life during the colonial period and beyond. One, one reason often given for the poor response is the disastrous choice of the word Lubanga or Lubanga as the name for God. This was an importation from Winyoro where Rohanga, a tradition name for the Creator, was used for the Christian God. Razalara always regretted the use of this early name. He felt that the Luo word, Jok, was quite capable of carrying the Christian concept of divinity. But both CMS, Church Missionary Society, and the Verona authorities had come to the conclusion that Jok had too many ambiguous and positively evil association to be used. What they did not realize at the time was the while the word Lubanga also had a sinister indigenous meaning, Jok Lubanga referred to the unambiguously evil spirit responsible for tuberculosis of the spine. In his book Men Without God, the Anglican Bishop of Northern Uganda, J.K. Russell, wonders whether this fatal misunderstanding was responsible for a subconscious bar to the acceptance of the missionary message of a great and loving God. It is symbolic of a general failure to engage the hearts and minds of the people of Northern Uganda. Occult P.B. Tech, an actually brought up as a protestant but who became as stringent a secularist at Dreebag has argued that the failure to find an adequate name for the Christian God and the farcical adoption of Lubanga shows the essential non-religious this worldly character of Acholi accepts concepts. It explains and justifies their non-acceptance of Christianity. 
it was a courageous refusal to be bamboozled by foreign mythes. Modern actual Christians are more likely to accept Kurazola's contention that joke can convey the concept of supreme being. But now it is too late. Joke is now irremediably associated with the devil. The periphery of Uganda. The periphery of Uganda. By 1914, only three areas of Uganda were practically in, 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 uh, untouched by missionary work. West Nile, Kigezi, and Karamoja. In the case of West Nile and Kigezi, this was largely because they were late additions to colonial Uganda. For the Catholics, the White Fathers naturally extended their work to include Kigezi and the Verona Fathers to include West Nile. For CMS Church Missionary Society, this additional territory caused some problems since Church Missionary Society CMS had already overextended itself in the evangelistic thrust of the previous 20 years and could hardly spare finances or personnel to open up new mission fields. Thus, Bishop Willis was willing to negotiate a special arrangement with the African Inland Mission, a conservative evangelical interdenominational faith mission, largely American in origin and, and with work in Kenya and the Congo. By this agreement, AIM undertook to send mainly Anglican missionaries to West Nile and to form a congregation which were part of the native Anglican church. West Nile is one of the most diverse parts of Uganda, the most significant groups being the Sudanic Lubara, the Nilo Hamitic Kakwa, and Nilotic Alu. Christianity has made a greater impact here than in other parts of northern Uganda. Islam is also a significant force in the Aringa County, a Lugubara area. Neither the Verona Father nor the AIM put a great emphasis on the school. The Verona Father felt at a disadvantage in the face of a colonial British educational system. The AIM were anxious not to confuse evangelism with education and were to come into conflict with their converts over their neglect of schools in contrast to the CMS Church Missionary Society. Nevertheless, a situation characteristic of other parts of Uganda did emerge in West Nile of a smaller Protestant com community, often go ahead and innovative, and a larger and more tolerant Catholic society. Kigezi was evangelized for the Anglicans by the Rwanda mission of the CMS, Church Missionary Society, financially autonomous of its parent missions and with a distinctly conservative evangelical basis. It was through the Rwanda mission that much of the impetus for revival in Anglican church in Uganda was mediated and Kigezi has become the stronghold of the Barokole movement. Protestants and Catholics are fairly evenly divided in Kigezi which resembles Ankole in the bitterness of its political religious conflicts. It is strange that West Nile and Kigezi, almost the last area of Uganda to be evangelized, have evinced such a strong and vigorous Christianity. This cannot be said of the last area, Karamoja. 
Since 1929, the Anglican Bible Churchmen's Missionary Society BCMS, another conservative evangelical society which broke away from CMS Church Missionary Society in 1922, has been working patiently in Karamoja without any dramatic results. The Verona father came later but in the last 20 years have overtaken the protestants through their efficient and effective school work and the range of their relief work. Christianity has remained peripheral to this pastoral society. And this marks the end of episode number two. Let's connect to episode number three in Jesus name. Would you wish to give your life to Jesus Christ to become your personal Lord and Savior? It is simple. Put your right hand in your chest. Repeat before me these words. Loving Father God, I know I am a sinner. I now come before you in a sorrow heart. I ask for forgiveness and repentance. I believe in my heart Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He died and resurrected on the third day for my sins. I confess him in my mouth as my personal Lord and Savior from today. I denounce myself from the angels of the enemy. Father, I ask you to rub my name out of the book of death. Put my name to the book of eternal life. On that day when the redeems are hearing their names, let me also hear my name in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray for you, God, to give you more wisdom, grace, and also give you anointing that can protect you against the darkness of the enemy. And I pray for healing, safety, and transformation in Jesus' name. Bishop Professor Mugume Bagambaki Richard has been my name, Bishop of Upper City Covenant Churches, and also President Stock Chancellor, Uxati University. God bless you. We meet again. You can also join us in our university for more of the deep history. In Jesus' name, bless you.